Under genetically modified organisms, we had genetically modified plants and genetically modified animals. Now, in GM plants, we are going to deal with GM crops. Okay. Now, what GM crops would be in order to increase the crop produce, in order to achieve a better yield so that the farmer is, uh, you know, in good economic condition and whatever uh, shortcomings we have in the field, they are overcome. We have genetically modified crops. Now, the aim of genetically modified crop is that it should be able to uh, withstand the stress conditions which plants otherwise are not able to uh, produce a good yield in and the second thing should be that it should be pest resistant, it should be weed resistant and many other effects which the ecosystem of a field has on that particular crop they could be you know curtailed to a certain extent. So, we have GM crops for that purpose where we put an additional gene into the plant and that gene is responsible for uh, enabling the plant to withstand the different type of stresses that could be put into the scenario by field ecosystem. Now, we have uh, the example of certain crops where yield was increased, we have an example of certain crops where the biological abiotic stresses, pardon me for that, where the abiotic stresses could be well met. Now, we have a certain category of crops where we deal with pests, okay. Now, you know the pests are such organisms which are going to eat away your crop, when your crop would be eaten away the farmer will be in distress because the yield would be low. Now, these pests had a conventional method of uh, their control and that was pesticides and uh, you might have heard lately in newspapers that pesticides are not good for health if consumed, they are uh, causing things like uh, biomagnification in the fields, they are responsible for a lot of agri pollution that is coming into our houses, it has reached our houses and veins, it is well well entrenched in our bodies now, those pesticides which were used in the green revolution. Now, with the technology advancing and coming to our doorsteps, this biotechnology, we have a mechanism where this uh, pest control could be carried out, but in such a way that the organism which was to be eaten by the pest itself is providing the resistance. You do not have to spray external pesticides, some chemical that is made in the industry. Instead, you make such plants in the industry which have a, an inborn pest resistance. All right. Now, for that we have Bt crops. Now, those crops which can themselves meet very well with the pest and kill them in return. Those would be Bt crops. Now, what Bt crops are? You have heard about Bt cotton. I am pretty sure till now you know what Bt cotton is. In our country, we have only Bt cotton that has been legalized that can be put into the fields. Rest of the Bt crops, they are still under uh, field testing and uh, paperwork is being done by the government so that all those uh, ethical issues are taken into consideration and then it would be introduced. There are crops like Bt mustard, there is Bt brinjal, but only Bt cotton has found its way into the fields. Bt mustard, Bt potato, all these crops are somewhere in files and their field tests are being done to ensure that once they have been introduced into the agriculture, they are not putting any adverse effects on the ecosystem and mind it, there are very few countries, I guess not more than 10 countries on global scale which has uh, which have actually introduced the GM crops into their countries, okay, into their agriculture sector. So, you can very well imagine that, yeah, they have some sort of ecological implications which bring some adverse effects and that is why they are being studied and their field tests are being done. But before coming to that point, you must know what these are, what Bt cotton is. This thing you know, this is the, uh, you know, fabric which makes most of your clothes. What is this thing? This is derived from bacillus, now bacillus is a bacteria the name suggests and 
this was the gene genus name and this is the specific name now this is a bacteria which produces a certain category of endotoxins now those are endotoxins and the category of endotoxins is crystals okay now from crystals we have taken the word cry remember this word okay cry word has been taken endotoxins cry type of endotoxins there is category of endotoxins cry is the crystal type we have to deal with cry endotoxin which this bacteria produces now what we have to do with these endotoxins we want a genetically modified crop that means we want a cotton that will have the genes responsible for producing these endotoxins so this is our field of study that there will be a cotton that will be produced in the lab it will have its own genome and along with that it will have a gene incorporated in its dna which will code for cry endotoxins that means this bacteria produces this class of endotoxins and at the same time the cotton that will be produced produced after genetic modification that will also produce these endotoxins now this cotton is often infested by butterflies beetles lepidotheran insects ball worms corn borers etc these are the categories of insects which this cry endotoxin is going to target and remember they are going to eat it that endotoxin will have effect on them whatsoever other organism comes and eats this cotton plant is part of an ecosystem they are not going to affect that so those insects or those predators which are going to directly affect the yield of the particular crop they are targeted in particular using a gene which encodes for cry endotoxin now the gene that is responsible for this is named according to this only this cry category of endotoxins cry 1 a c okay and cry 2 a b this is the category these are the two genes which are responsible for producing cry endotoxin okay the toxin is produced inside the cotton leaves or in the entire plant in the form of protoxin now this protoxin is present in the leaves of bt cotton i'm going to rub this in the leaves of bt cotton we have the protoxin now some insect comes supposedly a butterfly comes please ignore my line diagram whatever this insect comes and it feeds on this particular part of the leaf it eats it now what will happen when it eats it the protoxin would enter into the gut okay inside the gut of the particular insect this protoxin is going to come in contact with the brush bordered epithelium of the intestine and this protoxin would get converted into proper crystal crystal toxin and when it comes in contact with the alkaline ph so the protoxin is converted to real toxin when it gets alkaline ph of the gut of insect target insect okay inside that alkaline ph it becomes a toxin it forms the crystals those crystals they create pores inside the intestinal wall of the insect now once the pores are created insect is going to die and these insects are targeted so you see how target specific we have got in the term of pesticides like we had the example of ddt when you sprayed ddt in the fields it was supposed to kill all the pests that were found okay because it was a strong chemical not just the pests it later on got bio magnified in the lakes and it killed the birds as well the bird population was declining as a result of that pesticide so we get to know that these bt crops are targeting the specific insect 
So, we had the example of Bt cotton where we had the cry genes which were responsible for tackling the problem of cotton borer, corn borers and cotton ball worms. These two genes were responsible for producing the cry endotoxin inside the gut. Okay. So, this is a genetically modified crop. The cry gene has to be incorporated into the cotton, uh, cotton plants genome and then it produces the toxins inside the gut of the pests which come and infest the plant. Now, because we have talked so good how specific it is, we have to take into consideration one minor point as, as in the beginning I told you that this is the only single crop that has been introduced into our field ecosystems. Apart from that, another thing I told you that very few countries globally have uh, put into use these genetically modified crops. Now, what is the reason that all these countries and all these people, they are uh, stepping backwards somehow in or they are not completely enthusiastic of introduction of these GM crops though they appear so um, target oriented and uh, very well meet our uh, needs that we seek from a crop good crop and for a good yield of course. What is the reason? The reason is that once this has been introduced into the ecosystem again the same thing I would say that in the lab the situations and conditions are different but when it has been introduced into an ecosystem, ecosystem is, uh, is a totally and completely holistic unit ok all things are interrelated. So, supposedly you introduce Bt cotton you have a cotton variety which is completely new to all these insects they are also living organisms they are also going to develop some sort of resistance. So, with time we have seen that toxin resistance toxin resistance is developing in these insects all right they are developing an in internal resistance okay so not just these those uh, insects which feed on these insects they are also harmed so in a way though it was quite specific but once put into the ecosystem it can have adverse effects so this was all about the GM plants and specifically the Bt crops that we had to discuss with reference to Bt cotton we got an idea what all other Bt crops would be targeting at what is the purpose of introduction of these Bt crops and the shortcomings that we had discussed that also we saw. We are going to see other aspects as well in terms of shortcomings of these genetically modified plants when we study about ethical issues in next.